Hey, audio everyone, Lost Leader here. We're back in action for more of the Time Spinning Witch uh, review attraction. That's right, we're doing uh, the waterworks this time. So let's get going with those cards now. Okay, the first card we have going on here, the Betty Betty uh, Bal. The Betty Betty Bal. Uh, it's a one cost, quick cast, good so far. Rest target resonator. Eh. If the weather is thunderstorm, this card deals damage to that resonator equal to its attack. Ooh, a swing and a miss uh, for water right out the gate. Um, this card is not good. It requires an additional thing in order to maybe kill that enemy, and it just doesn't work as well as it could. If it was rest target resonator, if the weather is thunderstorm, this card deals damage to opponent equal to its attack, it would be fantastic. It would be a fantastic card and it'd be able to run something that doesn't quite make sense. But with the setup that it has now and everything, it's just too many setups and, and steps to order to make this card just kind of like kill your opponent's resonator and that's not great. It just ain't great. Especially doesn't target any other given resonator out there, so you can't even do like a two for one dealy. So it's like Why not just kill it off the bat? Why not just kill it instead? This this card does nothing to make that work out for you Bad card Doctor doctor give me the news. We got a mermaid with combos too <laughs> I hope that wasn't too much, but as you can tell, I am a fan of Dr. Mermaid. Um, not only for the fact that Dr. Mermaid is super heck of fun to say, but it has combo potential. Uh, tap, recover your ruler if it's water. Nice, awesome. We could always use that. I don't see how she is gonna really like use it because she only has like to get like a card and it's not a very good card. Or we could just tap, remove all damage from target resonator. That is your that is your go-to right there. That is something that I'm like, hey, guess what? It's all recovered. It's fine. I'm healed up. Let's do this again. Let's do another another joust with it and whatnot. Just really, really, really cool. And I, I like that combo potential that, that she has going on for herself. It would really help if she didn't have to like tap in order to attack or something. But mmm. Oh well, you know. She's still a 4-7. She's very decent in terms of uh being able to take hints and whatnot, and she could kind of combo into other things. And I could definitely see her being a very good resonator in that sense that she is able to combo with something and she has something to go for. But for the most part, she's just kind of like run of the mill, sort of like at least this is a good mermaid. You could probably use it in the deck and figure out something to do with it. But for the most part, you're not going to get a whole lot of, of things you could do with. Uh, Dr. Mermaid. Um, niche card, definitely. Definitely a niche card, but it has more play in just mermaids than just mermaids. So overall, just, just a good card. Just, just a good card. Giant Rabbit. Resonator. Beast. 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 B beast? It's a five cost, thousand, thousand. Already, I don't like this. I don't like this already. When this card enters the field, put target resonator on top of its owner's deck. Not enough to compensate that five cost. Bad card. I'm sorry, it's just a bad card. I, I it, it confuses me and astonishes me that it's it's a beast for one, and there's no were rabbit in sight. Just did they lose it? I mean, we also have rabbit too, so it's just kind of like force of will. What are you doing here? The potential to combo with this this card is drawn deeply down because you made it beast instead of anything else. Where rabbit will work. Rabbit will work. If you had either of those two, it would work better. But right now it's it's filling a gap of beast that no thing has. No one's using beast. That's not a thing. Don't do that. Why are you doing this? It's a bad card. It's really nice art, but it's a bad card. It sucks. Like why is it a thousand Twelve or something. Why? Why is it just thousand thousand? Just no, no. Giga Thunderfish. Now this is a five cost worth playing. Just that twelve twelve off the bat, and look at all those effects it has. Oh my God! Let's get through it, y'all. 
Whenever this card attacks, it deals 200 damage to each J resident your opponent controls. Hoo! 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 Ho! Okay, cool. Whenever this card deals damage to a J resonator, rest that J resonator. Hoo! 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 It doesn't recover during the recovery phase as long as this card is on the field. You could stop Ayu. You could stop Ayu with this. You could do it. You could stop Ayu with this. You could just, just be like, oh, it doesn't recover though. Meh. And it's J Resonator. It's J Resonator. So not only on top of that, but you you could rest zero on this. Zero will take the damage like a champ. Be like, Psh, whatever, I don't give a heck. Like, oh wait, I don't recover. Hmm. And it's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you're just kind of screwed on a lot of things when that happens. When this card enters the field, if the weather is thunderstorm, search your deck for a card named Mega Thunderfish and or card named uh, Thunderfish and put them into the field, then shuffle your deck. You can make a deck of just the fishes themselves. There is combo potential with just this card. This could be a whole entire deck of just Giga Thunderfish going out there and punking you. There could be. I'm not saying it's going to be a great deck if you do focus on that, but this card alone and this card alone could be your win condition. It's a five cost. It's going to be super hard to get out. Super, super hard. But at the very least, it packs a punch. Unlike some rabbits that are five cost, I just, no. This is at least a decent card to like build off of you know what I'm saying you get what I'm going with it has so many things that you could do with it so many little potential things that it could stop or combo with or any other sort and that's just really really nice to have so yeah it's an okay card for the most part I don't see it getting a lot of play because there's only so much you could do with it but if you get this bad boy out on the field whew, you're good you're, 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 you're solid he's corkscrew that's a very weird how it's with this situation. By that I mean it's a chant. Eh, chant speed time I understand with what's going on here. Three cost. Ooh, search your deck for the card named Keys the Wise Dolphin or Keys the Electric Dolphin. Put it into the field then shuffle your deck. It gains swiftness and precision until end of turn. At the end of the turn return it to its owner's hand. Kinda cool. Kinda cool. My only problem with this is that it's two Pacific cards. And if you don't want either of those cards, which in all honesty, this is probably just going to be played with Keys the Electric Dolphin and not Keys the Wise Dolphin or one of the other. It's one of them that just really sucks and one of them that doesn't suck as much. Um, but as for the most part here, you just like, why would you run Keys the Electric Dolphin? Why would you run Keys as your, your win, your win card? I don't understand that position. I don't understand why would you do that when you have plenty of other cards you can rely on and not just keys. That's my biggest problem with this card. It's niche beyond niche. You only have two cards that you can search with this card. Two. Two cards. So it's like, why won't you just let me search for another, like, just give me, search, search your deck for a water resonator. That's like three costs or less. They have swiftness and swiftness and precision till in a turn. And then that would be good. This would be a good card to have. But no. It just stuck with these two things. Why would you run it? I don't understand. Do you, is keys gonna really work for you? Because I don't see it working. I really don't. I don't see why anyone would want to run either of the keys cards and then this card on top of the fact. Maybe one of the keys and that's it and just get like a search resonator thing but just this as your searcher no I'm sorry it, this is a bad card I mean I'm not sorry but come on see this is kind of cool right so keys electric dolphin it pairs up with it so I was like okay you know what you could kind of run keys electric dolphin it hints the point thousand thousand this card cannot be blocked as long as the weather is thunderstorm I understand keys himself being a win condition for Shayla because she could just throw out thunderstorms like everybody cares so every other turn this card would not be blocked like you can't block it it just it just goes in just just does that 3000 that's cool 
But why would you do this card into this card? I, I, I don't understand why you would want to do that. Um, precision's not great when you want to just not be blocked. Um, there are not a lot of cards out there that are just like, I could kill this card with a thousand and it's a three cost when you could just have a kill like with a three cost instead. I mean, maybe a J Roar? Maybe? That you, you would kill a Keys Electric Dolphin? But that's meh. The swiftness, I understand. That makes sense, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to attack as just a dummy. But it's, it's an okay card. I see this being a win condition, a win con for a lot of Thunderstorm decks. But overall, I'm going to be like, aside from Thunder, this card doesn't work well. It's a four cost, which is already just kind of like, mm, and then it's a thousand thousand, which you can only do so much with it. But at least you can focus around like winning with this deck you go you can focus around doing that just getting keys uh the electric dolphin uh shoot it out a thousand thousand that can't be blocked pretty freaking awesome pretty sweet um at least every turn it gets shayla flipped you could do it every single turn and you could win within four turns and if you want to flip it up you could do that too and i could see that being pretty awesome i really can i just I just don't see it being paired well with that because there's better rush techniques than just having keys to the electric dragon, the electric dolphin. Oh my goodness. Just, it's like good for like literally just all of thunder. Just, it just, it confuses me how they're just like, let's have a, a car that just searches this guy out. I mean, it's a nice trade up, but no, I just don't agree with it. It's, it's just so he's okay as a win con he is an okay as a win con but it's just it could have been better and it annoys me that it's just kind of like a four cost thousand thousand and just dolphin as does it you can't be walked i mean good resonator good good everything else just kind of meh. i don't see him as a win con like there's better win cons out there that's that's my point being I suppose so yeah it's a good card I definitely think it is it's just why would you build a deck around this after just one little niche card I mean you could I just don't see why you would now here's something that actually has some potential lightning cave one cost non water J resonators lose and cannot gain swiftness and flying ain't that a good ain't that a good I was actually thinking about putting this in one of my decks that I'm building right now. I can say for certain this definitely helps this deck. And then you can just tap it if you want. Tap it, the weather is rain until end of turn. Tap it, the weather is thunderstorm until end of turn. Play this only play this ability only if the weather is rain. Pretty nice, pretty sweet. Does not really need to be used in the deck that I want to use because um the weather is rain is kind of meh. But this is an addition that I could definitely see everybody else playing. Like, if you don't have Shayla as your water resonator, and you're like, I really like, lose to a lot of swiftness of flying, then you could use this card. It's a full-on utility card, and it has weather and rain and stuff. And if you have four of them in your deck, or two of them, or three, you could just go, the weather is rain now, the weather is thunderstorm. Boom, boom. It's such a better card. Just it, It's used in so many good ways, and I like it for that fact. Only sucks that it's just an addition, and not like addition, like treasury item, or addition, like subcategory item, essentially. So you could like, um, like go search for it a bit better. But ha it being a one cost, and it making sure that, you know, uh, resonators lose swiftness and flying, uh, or uh, J resonators, I'm sorry, J resonators can't game that. J resonators, so it helps stop IU from pulling off a lot of her shenanigans that she do oh never mind it's non water I'm sorry oh my god I just said non water too um obviously you're still gonna have the problem with that but for the most part you could side deck this you could side deck this for a lot of decks and you could just have this in your deck mainly if you want to produce weather if you're like weather is my thing but I don't want to use Shayla then you could do this really good card honestly i think it's probably one of the best water cards out there right now um for its utility and whatnot i could definitely see why people would want to play it or at least side deck it but 
for the most part, I feel like there's going to be a card you're going to see. Just a little bit. Just a little bit for, for weather fanatics and, and whatnot. Lightning Dragon! This is the card. This is the card. This card cannot attack unless the weather is thunderstorm. That's fine. 15-15. Fine. 4 cost. Let's go. Lightning Dragon. Please, please, please. Thunder, thunder, thunder. Woo, woo, woo. This is what I would use for my thunder. This is what I would use for my, uh, like, like, let, let's go Thunder uh, deck and just have this guy out and about. Because he's really, really cool. I like him a whole bunch. And I feel like he is the best for your win condition, your win con in, in Thunder. That 15-15, nothing to sneeze at. Really good. Has flying. Really good. Just shoot out that Thunder. Shoot out that Lightning Dragon. Just go, brah, and it'll go, brah, and it'll attack and it'll get you good. Um, of course, if the weather is not thunderstorm, that sucks. But for the most part, you're, if you're a thunderstorm deck, you're gonna want him as your win con. I feel it's like the best, best case scenario for yourself. And I definitely like this card a whole bunch. I really, really do. Really cool art. I would not want to run into this dragon. I honestly feel I'd be terrified of it. But a four cost win con condition with the 15 15 flying. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll, I'll definitely take that. Lightning Phantom. Now, this is a weird one. It's a 3 cost 7-7. Seven, seven. So, it's like, already not the best thing in the world. But, one, the weather is rain until end of turn. And then, if you play, use a water instead. The weather is thunderstorm until end of turn. Play this ability only if the weather is rain. It's alright, honestly. I don't know why it's a spirit. I feel like it would have been better if it was a mermaid or if it was like a dragonoid or something else. Like pretty much anything but spirit I feel would have been better for this card. Like even fish pot would have been better or something, but nah, it's, it's just a spirit. So it's like, pfft, whatever. Regardless, I don't think this card's going to see play when you have uh, cards like Lightning Cave as a far better substitute. Like would you rather have it to where... Your opponent cannot gain swiftness and flying, or rather, non-water opponent players could not gain swiftness and flying. Oh, hold on, actually, non-water J Resonators lose and cannot gain swiftness and flying. I see, I see, so this is for a pure water deck. Huh, that's even more interesting now that I think about it. Um, I mean, I guess I could see the reason why you would use him over this one, because that way you could keep the your your water non-water Resonators to have swiftness and flying. But if you're going for a full Thunder deck, why do you have non-water cards in there? Like, water solo I could see actually happening now. I really can. Uh, or at the very least, water's water like mixed with a bit of um, a bit of color. That way you just can play other spells and whatnot, but not like resonators. Like it just be like ever so slightly. Um, regardless, I don't think it's a good card. I could see how Lightning Phantom can be used in different decks in comparison to the addition, but I'd rather be y'all build on the, this addition than this card. It's it's a three cost. It's too much. If it was a two cost water, I'd be fine with it because that way you just have those extra things with it, and it's just you could, it's just a seven seven, or you could make it like a six six, and it probably would be better that way too. But here, nah. I just don't see it being better than the addition. I just don't. So, bad card. Just trade up. Lightning Shield has combo potential. You all don't see it now, but I do. <laughs> Two cost. Water. Uh, just avoid. Will. Quick cast. Good stuff. Target J Resonator gains plus, uh, zero plus 800. Um, and barrier until end of turn. If the weather is thunderstorm, it gains wind damage is dealt to this card by a J Resonator. This card deals that much damage to the J Resonator until end of turn. Ooh, 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 ooh. Surprise your opponent by making them kill their own person, make your person have barrier, and then just heal all that damage up with them. Um... Dr. Mermaid. Hoo, 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 hoo. I just see this being a really nice card of kind of like, surprise, surprise, I gave myself more defense and then also barrier, so you can't stop me. 
You try to target my, my card? No, thank you. I don't think so. This card has utility. This card has full-on utility, uh, just either giving your J Resonator Barrier or giving it uh, additional 800. Um, that's just off the bat. If it was just that, it honestly, I could see it being played. But with the addition of the Thunderstorm ability, where it's like when damage is dealt to this card by a J Resonator, this card deals that much damage to the J Resonator until end of turn, you just like knock it back with the same amount. You could really do a whole lot with this situation. You really can. I like that idea. I don't see how I could put it in my decks right now, but I definitely want to see what I could do with this situation here. And I think a lot of Force of Will cards where it just buffs defense need to have something like this. Either give it barrier, give it the ability to hurt the other J Resonator, or like make it stand up again. Something that one would help uh, going on D being a lot more practical and a lot cooler because you need to do a lot more stuff on D than you do on attack where it's just like I gain like a thousand ain't that neat um, this is just way cooler honestly and I really like this card I really like this art Shayla's looking like a bamf <coughs> <coughs> and just overall I, I can't wait to find out some combo potential for this card I really can't um the only thing that sucks is that it is it is regulated to weather thunderstorm, so it's like you kind of have to use thunderstorm people. But with these upcoming cards that we're gonna go see very closely, not so bad because you know mermaids are now a considerable viable threat now um, with with these next few cards that are gonna be coming up. So yeah. of course, as soon as I, as soon as I go to the next card, it's a were rabbit and not a mermaid. So you know. It's, is that's I meant that to happen. <laughs> Lonely Moon Were Rabbit. 500, 500. Two cost. This card gains plus 400, plus 400 as long as you don't control another resonator. I can see somebody making a really wonky deck where this is the only resonator. Now, hear me out. A 9 9 swinging for funsies is really, really cool. Return it back to your hand, put another one out there. Boom, bada, bang. Swiftness, swash, swash. And just be cool. I can see it. I don't know why I can see this so. Oh, God. I can see this so. I can see this kind of um, potential going on here. I feel like she's really, really cool. I love her art. I love how she has this weird, like, sword thing going with her and whatnot. Really, really cool. Um, two costs, awesome. Two costs for a nine cost potentially, really, really awesome. So I'm just kind of like, you could use her. You could use her in some sort of wonky deck, and she'd be really great for it. You give her that, you combo with that, so she like lives forever too, and just you base solely on her and utterly just her. It'd be a really wacky deck, but she is something you can build off. Of. And if you don't want to build off her, you could just have her out there and just attack with everybody else and then attack with her last if everybody else dies. And then she's a 9 all of a sudden and she just she hurts your opponent. That's really cool. Just really cool stuff. I feel like she has a lot of potential that has yet to be seen or unlocked or whatever. And I'm going to see what I can do with her. But really good card, honestly. I think it's a very good card. Um, we definitely haven't seen cards like this where just like, hey, how can we make this card better by working around it and such? And I think this is probably one of the best ways to do it. So uh, you're definitely going to see me experiment with this card at least a little bit, but not anytime soon. Yeah, because, you know, it was just released, so I was like, I gotta figure that out. <laughs> but I'll probably figure something out. I, I like the idea of this card, for sure. Lunar Prophet. When this card enters the field, look at the top card of your deck. You may put it on the bottom of your deck. Draw a card. Kind of okay. Um, three costs, not okay. A seven seven, not okay. Wear a rabbit, cool. We have potential here. She's nice looking. I like her. I just don't see why you would actually play her. I really don't. I'm sorry. I just don't. It's a seven seven with a cycle effect. That's kind of cool. But we over here have a mermaid. That's a three cost. That will has a defense of twelve. And we'll let you do almost the same kind of effect that she does. Except she does it whenever she blocks or attacks, I think. Um, one or the other. But this right here is just like, I could just draw a card. Um, maybe the one that I want, maybe one that I don't want. Just kind of, mm, I don't care. 
I just, there's better potential out there. There's better stuff out there you, can, you have for any given uh, water deck out there. So if this was like maybe red or, or green or black or or light, I could understand some people wanting to use this card because they don't get that much ability to. But this one being the way that it is, just kind of nah. Nah. Like it was like, look at the top card of your deck. You may put it on the bottom of your deck. Um, if you do look at the top card of your deck and then you can just like keep doing it that way till you cycle. Um, that would be pretty cool. Um, I could definitely see that being really, really good. But this, as it is now, nah. I'm sorry. I just, I don't like this card. I like the art though. She's pretty. Magical Electric Warrior! Blah! <laughs> it's a golem! But it's a golem that's only used for thunder. That's weird. It's a two cost. Cool. Uh, mobilize one with water. This card is mobilized. It gains whenever this card attacks or blocks. Rest target J Resonator as long as the weather is thunderstorm. How? How? <laughs> you could rest I you could rest any any given resonator out there, any J resonator out there. You don't have to fear zero. You could just be like, zero has to go rest now. I'm sorry. Now, that's really cool. I like that idea. I like this this whole entire golem thing. What I don't like is that I have to pay one water for it. Which to be fair, I don't I'm a cheapskate. I don't like paying for anything. But it being an 88 cost and it having the ability that it does have when weather shows up, whoo, does make me want to use this card in some way, shape, or fashion. But this would be another card you use for a Thunder deck. That's for show. This, this, you could use it in a Thunder deck and boop, boop, boop. Just, it's cool, right? It's, I think it's super cool. Just weird how Shayla has a better golem than most other golems. Like, legitimately. Shayla, this is Shayla's golem. Like, no if and buts about it. It could actually be played in her deck and everything, so it's just... Kind of weird how Shayla has like a, a thunder deck with no mermaids and a thunder deck with mermaids. Whatever. Point being, good card. I can see it into play, uh, mainly just for thunder decks. But meh. Mifa Thundercloud Wizard. She's a two cost mermaid six six. Um, okay. If a spell ability you control would change a player's weather, that player's weather changes to thunderstorm instead. That's kind of cool. Like honestly, it is kind of cool. I just, she's kind of a redundant card. That's that's kind of the biggest problem that I have with this. Um, she does have potential for this card, Lightning Cave. You could actually run her and this card in particular, and when the weather is rain, you can make it Thunderstorm instead. But for the most part, I don't really see too much of how her abilities will really work out so well for you, or the reason why you would run Thunderstorm instead of rain for the most part because I feel like if you're using mermaid you kind of have to go different angles and degrees and whatnot and when you want to use rain weather and thunderstorm weather so it going into thunderstorm instead of rain I could kind of see hurt you more than anything else but for the most part I will say I do like that they brought her back uh, Mafina <laughs> I like the way she looks and everything I just wish she was a better card in all honesty I mean, I see her potential, but there are just better cards out there. There really just is just better cards out there. She's a two cost, so she does cost quite a bit. If she was like a three, six, um, one cost card or something, maybe I could see it as a, as a far better uh, mermaid card in particular, but for what it is right now, for how, how what it's worth, meh. Mermaid Researcher. Here's a card I thought would be really, really good. It's not. It, it's a three cost, already hurts itself. Seven, seven, hurts itself even more. As this card enters the field, choose a race. Cool, you, we can put it to any given race. Um, tap it, target resonator of a chosen race gains plus 200, plus 200 until end of turn. That's the problem. Just target resonator. Just target resonator. Not all of the chosen race gains plus 200, plus 200 until end of turn. If it was that, it would be better. It would be a card worthwhile. If this was a two cost, six, six, and they had the ability, I could see it being played more, but it being a three cost just does not work out for it, which is sad because she's really cute and I like her. Oh, look at that hair. I love that hair. 
I honestly like all the mermaids that I've been seeing lately. But her ability, her effect is just too slow. It's too... Like, not enough. It's essentially just not enough of what you could do. Like, why would you play her when you could play a better beef spell in comparison? Because you could just play a better beef spell instead of just her. Uh, her being a resonator does not matter nearly as much when she has that crappy defense. And, um... She's just not the best thing in the world, you know? It's the sad truth. Oh, a Drew. It's a three cost. Oh no, that sucks, right? Six, six. Oh my god, that's terrible, right? If the weather is thunderstorm, you may pay two less to play this card. Suddenly, boom. Go straight, boom, boom, boom. All the way downtown. Downtown where it, it's actually such a viable card in a Thunderstorm deck. And despite the fact it's Beast, despite the fact everything like that, this is what makes Thunderstorm viable. Having that three cost turn into a, a one cost, that's a six, six swiftness, is so mean. It's so utterly mean. I love it. I love it for that fact. And I, I definitely would, would love to see a Thunderstorm be played just because of this card alone definitely a really good card um obviously not a good card if it's not thunderstorm it could only be run in thunderstorm decks but thankfully it could run in both the mermaid and non-mermaid decks because of how beefy it is and whatnot so that's pretty cool uh with that just, it's being one cost and whatnot i would def i would definitely want to figure out how to run it and whatnot hoo 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 oh here's the card that got everyone mad but it's not as good as people think it really isn't, which is weird because it's a were rabbit soul. Rebellious soul Ayu. We finally have Ayu back. She's back. And she's hot. She is the sexy hot. She's not the cute little ditzy girl where like, I'm gonna help save the world. She's the one that's like, yeah, you know, your son calls me mommy too. <laughs> like it, it, that's what it is. That that's the whole situation. It's a two cost. Is anyone gonna really look at, look at the two cost here? Anybody here? Flying? Okay, that's kind of like, whew. Um, when this card enters the field, gain control of target resonator with total cost one, uh, as long as this card is in the field. Mm, it's okay. That effect's okay. That's the that's effect that everyone gets. But here's the card that caused people to get in up for with this card. This card gains tap. This card becomes a copy of target J-Roller your opponent controls, except it doesn't become a J-Roller, and it's still a Resonator. As long as your J-Roller is Ayu uh, Lunar Sword Swordswoman or Ayu Shaman Swordswoman, this card is a Resonator, not a J-Roller. So you get to copy a, fee a free J-Roller, essentially. That's pretty cool. Honestly, it is pretty cool. Very situational. Super situational to the point of I don't see that ever happening unless you're running against zero. That's it. It honestly to me it feels like you're just like, oh, they're using zero? Okay, I wanna use zero as well. That's it. That is the only reason and way that I see it being potentially used. I mean there are some other things with that. There are. I, I don't doubt that one bit. But when people were saying how powerful it is Honestly, the only thing that makes it powerful is that it's a soul resonator. That is the only thing that makes it powerful. Unfortunately, it is the only soul resonator out there, so I feel Ayu is not nearly as viable as she could be. Because uh, a couple friends and I were talking about this. If Ayu had two soul resonators in this particular um, set, then she would be set. She would be fine completely because you have so much more potential to draw into just, I have a soul hand first turn, um, Exodia Obliterate. You would have that. You would have that ex exact same thing going for you. But with the way things going on right now, it's okay. It's fine. Um, but I could have really used another Soul Resonator along with this one. Still a good card. Most definitely still a good card. Um, obviously, you would not play any any deck that is not Soul or Were Rabbit. Because this could be used for a Were Rabbit deck. Um, but that's as far as I, I consider it going, in all honesty. So, yeah. Sea Serpent is an interesting card. Dinosaur. Huh. This card cannot be returned to its owner's hand. Hmm. Thousand Thousand. Four cost. I honestly don't see it being too bad. I really don't. I feel like you're gonna use this more in like a blue doubles thing. 
more than anything else, but it's still kind of meh. You hear me? A uh, thousand thousand just doesn't quite cut the stacks there. Um, the very fact that it can't be bounced is really cool. We don't have any other card like that, I think. Or if we did, I don't know it, or it's too early for me to actually remember where they are. But for the most part, Sea Serpent really just like down the road card. It, it's a down the road card. I could see why people will want to play it, but for the most part, it's not a win con. It's not something that you build your deck off of for the most part. It's pretty meh. Anything that it can combo with doesn't really work uh, for itself. It just doesn't, which is sad because, you know, it, I could see it having better potential. If it was like a three cost and uh, just lower it down to like 800, yeah. I could definitely see it be played more, but it being four cost, uh, a little too much for me to swallow for my taste, honestly. Just a little too much. But the art is really good, though. Like, I, I'd be scared of that sea serpent. Like, legit, what is with all these scary, like, like serpent things and whatnot in Force of War right now? Shayla's Adventure! Draw two cards, then you may put addition with total cost two or less from her hand into your field. I can see it. This is a pretty good card. It it has it's played for what it needs to be played for. Um, the very fact that you get to draw two cards is really awesome. The three cost of it is actually really awesome because that means that you can play two cards for a total cost of three, um, which is probably like a total cost of five, honestly. So you get a nice little trade up on top of the fact that you uh, draw more than your opponent does, which drawing is going to be very important for this upcoming. Um, set here because there's so many discard going on and whatnot. But for the most part, I just was not able to find a place for it in my decks. I just was not able to. I could definitely see other people being able to, especially with that water edition where it, you know, gives you rain and, and thunderstorm and whatnot. But aside from that, it's kind of meh. Like, it just kind of meh in, in, in that sense. Like, are there better cards out there to play? Yeah. Um, but I could see it being played in other decks. I really can. It's just kind of hard to actually find a place for it. You get me? Just kind of hard to place. Good card, though. Good good card. Shayla's Battle. Ooh. Two costs. Return target resident your opponent controls with a thousand attack or more to its owner's hand. If you do draw two cards, you have better cards than this. In fact, I think there's a card in the set that's better than this. Like, legitimately. Drawing two cards is kind of bleh to begin with. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's literally a card that you could trade up. I'm like, I'm not even joking, you could just trade up with it. Um, I really hope it's not the second card because it's gonna be sad. I do like how cool it looks though. Shayla, like, taking on the big uh, Giga Thunder fish thing is really cool. A really cool art and everything. The fact that this is a quick cast. Um, does not save it though. Um, just all those things about it just kind of suck. It just, because there's a better card. Watch, watch, there's going to be a better card. Well, this is not the better card yet, so, you know, no comedic effect here. But here we have the best mermaid in the game. No, not the best mermaid in the game. We do have one of the best mermaids in the game though. It is one of the best. Silent Mermaid, two cost, six, six. And, as long as the weather is a thunderstorm, your opponent cannot play cards during your turn. Full lockdown mode. Holy! Just make all quick casts irrelevant. Just make them all irrelevant for, for my turn. That is so cool. You could do whatever you want. You're like a car in a freaking candy store when it comes to that point. That is super duper duper cool. There's so much combo potential with Silent Mermaid that it's insane. And this is what helps Mermaid Thunderstorm just work its magic so well. And it's gonna be so great to just be like, you can't do nothing. And they're like, I can't. And you're like, yeah, this is a great card. This is a card you build off of. This is this is one of those cards that's just like, Mwah. And it's a slight niche card for sure because you would definitely put this in any Thunderstorm deck just in and only in a thunderstorm deck but really great card really great art love her i love the way she looks like yeah you know what whatever can't do nothing <laughs> oh and here we have this little pipsqueak small whale 
one cost, three of three. One water, this card gains zero plus 200 till end of turn. Why was that just a rain effect? Why wasn't this just a rain or thunder effect instead of just like, make it gain that much for this turn? I, I mean, you could keep pounding it, you could keep using it so it gains a lot of defense, but why would you? Why would you just give it defense? I think the variant's a little bit better, but still, it's it's kind of poop. This is just a poop card. It's a whale resonator, not even a fish. I mean, I get they're not the same thing, but you know, just why are you introducing whales as a resonator now? I, I don't get it. There's there's like one. Why? Salt panda. Why are there pandas in my water resonator deck? This card gains plus 400. Uh, as long as the weather is rain. That's pretty cool. This card gains plus 600 as long as the weather is thunderstorm. We have thunderstorm potential for a panda. Why is it doing this? I don't understand. It being a 7, a 7, a 5, pretty cool. It's a 1 cost only. You can rush with it. So that's really, really cool. I, I think that's pretty cool. It just It's a panda though. Why is it a panda? It's pretty cool, but just it's just kind of weird. I can see it being run in Thunder decks. I can. It's 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 a good card for Thunder decks, but it's just it's weird. <laughs> it's why are pandas in water? I I don't know. Thunder call. Oh, it's a one cost quick cast. If the weather is rain, the weather becomes thunderstorm until end of turn. Draw a card. <sighs> Why wasn't this called, like, Weather Change Rain or something? Like, why wasn't it? Why Why did they make this card? It's such a redundant card in that sense, where it's just like, oh, we have to make it rain, then we can make it thunder. And I can see Shayla using this card, and only Shayla, or I guess also Mathena, if you're really using a basic J Ruler, which I think is illegal. Um, regardless, and just... You're not gonna really use this in normal play. You're just not. It, it's bad. It's really bad. It's a one cost, which is like, okay, that's pretty cool, right? But then you realize it depends solely on the fact that your weather is rain at the time. So then you wouldn't be able to play it. I mean, you could play it to draw a card, but I, it just you have better draw cards in water. If it was like in a different like color group or whatnot, I could see this being played or like it just being like a, a null cost water, uh, like a null cost, like the weather is uh, rain turned into thunder. I could see it working. But aside from that, it just doesn't really work. It really doesn't. There are better water cards to draw cards. There are better water cards to make the weather thunderstorm. Uh, and Shayla is better at this than even this card. Like basic Shayla, basic J Ruler Shayla is better than this card. You would not use this card. Like, you would use the Weather Change Rain card more than you would use this card. Because you could at least search for it. This you can't. I, it's dumb. It's dumb. Here's a trade-up. Return target non-Magic Stone, non-J Ruler Entity to its owner's hand. Draw two cards with the Weather and Thunderstorm. This is a literal trade-up of this card. You have a literal trade-up in this set. With this card, they're both the same rarity. They're both the same type of card. Quick cast, two cost. And why would you not use Thunder Wave in comparison? Why would you not? It literally makes this card moot. It's a moot point at this point. If that was like a one cost, if Shayla's battle was like a one cost, it has some relevance. But it, it's not. So this is a better card through and through. You even get to draw two cards if the weather is thunderstorm. What were they thinking? What were they actually thinking? I'm so confused here. It's such a better card. Ah. Regardless, one of the best cards in the game. I'm not even joking. It, it, this is one of the best cards in the game. For real. Return target non-magic stone, non-J ruler entity to its owner's hand. There's so much bloody potential with this. There's a lot of additions that you could combo with constantly with this card. There's a lot of additions that you could just get rid of on your opponent's side. There's a lot of things that just come out and you could just get rid of it that way. 
and if the weather is thunderstorm you could draw two cards and that's not even like just for your sake like you don't have to run thunderstorm you can just go against thunderstorm and run this it's such an amazing card it's better than even the other card in uh, freaking ancient knights or just like return to the top of the the deck uh if it's the owner's um if it's raining the turn i mean there's utility with that card but this is card is just literally better it's literally better and it makes me so annoyed that they made like three different cards that are like this and this is the best one by a long shot there's no drawback to running this card in comparison there just isn't i, I don't see it just nah just nah this is the best the best card the best card the real good card thunderstorm five cost Ooh, i don't like that idea quick cast return all resonators to this owner's hands if the weather is thunderstorm their owners put them on the bottom of their decks in any order instead that's kind of cool right it's kind of cool that's you know you can wipe out the board and just just get rid of it what i would have liked instead is if they put it in the graveyard instead like if if the weather is thunderstorm they all put them in the grave um mainly for the fact that this is a five cost and there are plenty of other like five costs out there that kill resonators and it being a thunderstorm I could see why you would just like put them in the grave instead of just putting on the bottom of the deck like to me you're just helping your opponent uh in that way for certain degrees like if you're milling them out or something i just i don't see its proper potential i don't see it going too far and it needed to do something more for it to be a five cost like this like if it was a four cost i could actually justify it i could be like i you know what you, you could wipe out the whole board and put it all into the owner's hands or whatnot but it being the way that it is right now, not good. It's not a good card. Really cool art, though. Like, really cool. I want to get a hollow of this card. But aside from that, no. And Treachery. It's a three cost, which is like, oh, I can't run this in my IU deck, can I? <laughs> but it's a J Resonator you control gain plus 200 and precision until end of turn. Pretty cool. Prevent all damage that will be dealt to J Resonators you control by J Resonators your opponent controls until end of turn. Ooh, that's pretty cool. So you can just go and swing in for funsies. Like, you can. If this was a two cost, I think it would be a far better card. I, I don't see the reason why it can't be, because it's just a slow chant. But it being a slow chant three cost doesn't make sense to me. I love the art. I wish I could run it just for the art alone. I love this. I love her. I, I would totally call her mommy. I mean, um... <laughs> Just why is it a three cost without quick cast? Like, if you're gonna make it a two, uh, make it a slow chant, make it a two cost. You're not pumping it up a whole bunch. Plus two hundred and precision isn't that scary. If it was Pierce, yes, it would be. And then I understand the three cost card and everything. But all this stuff right here, prevent all damage that would be dealt to J Resonators you control by um, whoa, 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 whoa. prevent all damage that would be dealt to J Resonators you control by J Resonators your opponent controls until end of turn. Okay, I read this card wrong. I see now why it's not a quick cast. I see now. And it's J Resonators you control game plus 200. Oh my god! I was reading this wrong as just a one thing. Oh my god! This is some nasty situation here. Oh my god! Oh my god! You could wipe the board with this. You could you could destroy them with this. This is effective pump up board wipe. All Jake Resonators you control. All of them gain plus two hundred precision. Oh my god! Yeah, that that is that deserves it. This is a good card. You can build something off this. You can you can make something with this. Oh my god! Oh dear lord! You can hurt people with this. You can hurt them bad. Oh my god! So cool. I like this card. I need to figure out something to do with it. Really good card. Oh my god, as soon as Lost figured out how to read, you know? <laughs> I just, yeah, shoot, people need to find a way to play it, because I need to find a way to play it. Shoot, 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 shoot. Oh my god, so that's, that's treachery, it's treachery, ooh, ooh. Great card. Which is Shadow, three cost. Search your deck for a rare with a total cost three or less, or a water reservoir with a total cost two or less. Put it into the field. Then shuffle your deck. Not a bad card. Not even mine. Not, it's not a bad card at all. This is a good card. 
This is a really good card. It's a niche card for sure. I mean, you pretty much only run this in Were Rabbit for the most part, but everything else, nah, it's, it's, it's a good card. You got it. You got it. You pretty much would only run this in Were Rabbit, though. So it's just like, eh, meh, meh, meh. It's cool. I like it. I like this card. I mean, I can't do anything with it. I mean, I don't wear, run Were Rabbit, but hey. And here we have a variant. It's definitely a better card for sure. Um, it's just it's just a different color, which is just like it's, this is a shiny Pokemon now, ain't it? One cost, and then it just gains plus 200 uh, for every water that you give it. So you can pump it up late game in order to just make it like a, a solid thousand for funsies. Um, but for the most part, I still don't see this card being played, mainly because it's Resonator Whale. I mean, if it was anything else, if it just had anything else, if this is a soul resonator, oh my god, that'd be great. That'd be fantastic. Like, give it like water, a uh, whale soul, and it would have been played. You, you you can play it this way, but the way that it is now, just no, it doesn't work. It it don't work at all. I'm sorry, it just don't. So for the most part, I think water is uh, fairly decent with this. Um, mermaids did come back quite a bit. I'm very glad that it did. Uh, I wanted to use mermaids for the longest time. Thunderstorm is, is definitely a big presence now in comparison to how uh, Rain was because Rain was just not there at all. And you got a couple of cards that help uh, Were Rabbit and even some that help IU. Like literally one that helps IU. Uh, Treachery is a surprisingly good card too. Like wow. I did not realize the potential that it actually had until I read it properly. Everything else though, mm, it, it's alright for the most part. Overall, water was not the best in the world. Uh, I definitely think that um, a different uh, color did pull out better in the long run, but this is definitely way better than red. Way better. Well, thank you all for watching uh, this review of the water um, part of uh, the time wi the time spinning witch. And if you like this video, please share it if you can. And uh, hope to see you all next time. Okay, sayonara. Bye bye.